player. You're watching Midwinter Minis. My name's Guy, and welcome to my home. Being a little bit quiet, it's nighttime, babies are asleep, but I think I've got a pretty interesting and hopefully very useful video for you today. Now, thanks to 12 years of very strong, stable governance from the UK's Conservative Party, this country is now facing the very real possibility of three hour weekly rolling blackouts and fuel shortages during the deepest, darkest, coldest parts of winter. Now, with no power, heat or lights for a few hours, you might be tempted to sit on your phone and scroll endlessly through TikTok or Instagram, or maybe check out some very cool, inspirational YouTube videos. But, ah, you might also find yourself without any internet. Now, how are you expected to deal with that kind of situation? Sit alone in the dark with nothing but your thoughts? I don't think so. Warhammer to the rescue. Yes, friends, you can hobby in the dark, and I'm going to show you how by comparing and critiquing four of the most popular battery powered hobby lamps on Amazon. This might seem a bit pointless. I mean, any old lamp will do, right? Wrong. There are some real surprises here. And anyway, can't you just use your phone's torch? Would that be better? Well, let's find out. So the lamps we'll be testing are the Deep Light LED Desk Light, the Hapfish Magnetic Battery Light, the Daylight Company twist to go and the battery operated table lamps, reading lamp, rechargeable table lamp for bedroom, battery lights, indoor battery powered lamp, battery lamp, bedroom lamp, battery powered lights, battery lights, table lamp. Catchy. So factors to consider here, the quality of the light, how well it illuminates your painting area, the color temperature of the light, which will let you accurately see the colors you're painting and also the duration of the battery, how long you've got to work before you're plunged into darkness and quite possibly despair. Just to be clear, none of these in the test run on changeable batteries like double A's or D cells. So once they go out, you'll need to charge them. Most charge fully in less than an hour, but the twist you go takes about six hours to fully charge. Right, let's check out the light quality. The twist to go is definitely in the lead here, lighting a very decent amount of space and giving you plenty of room under it to work. And also the fact that you can angle it however you like is a real bonus. The Hatfish magnetic light also puts out a huge amount of light over a wide area and it comes with a sticky clip which houses the magnet mount so you can attach it to whatever you want in your hobby space and you're good to go. The deep light LED light puts out a decent amount of light but not quite as much and in a tighter area than the previous two but still very usable, especially for the price. It has a gooseneck but that doesn't get very high so you might have to work a little bit closer to the table than you normally would but then again it has a clip mount so you could put it on a shelf or something instead quite versatile. The, uh, let's just call it Lord Voldemort, has, how can I put this nicely, garbage light. Really small illuminated area and very dim compared to the others. The foldable form is nice and compact, but it doesn't give you much range of movement in lamp mode. Not that great to be honest. So how about the color of the light? Both the Hatfish and the Deep Light lamps have three color modes, a cool color setting, a warm color setting, and a neutral light setting, which uses both sets of LEDs, both very useful for painting, as you can see what your paints and models will look like in all lighting conditions. And also not everyone likes modeling or painting in cool lights, especially at night. Lord Voldemort has a really cozy, warm light color, probably really nice for late night reading or crafting, but not so great for painting as cooler colors will look really desaturated and weird. The Twist 2 Go doesn't have light temperature options, pumping out 6,000 Kelvin light for superb accuracy, but does feature three brightness levels. How much does this affect the battery life? Let's find out in a crude real world test. We let all of the lights charge in the studio overnight and then turn them all on simultaneously at 10 a.m. How long do they all last? Place your bets now. Which one went out first and which one went the distance? Surely the big boy from the Daylight Company, the most expensive model in the test by a long way, did the best, right? Wrong. It went out first. On max power mode, it died in just half an hour. The website says it lasts between three and eight hours depending on the brightness level. We had it on max brightness, so it only lasted 17% of the stated time. Poor show. It was pretty cold in the studio when we started the test, about 15 degrees or 59 Fahrenheit, so maybe the ambient temperature reduced the battery life, but the others are still going strong. And if we're talking about real world tests in a winter blackout, this is how it's gonna be. Anyway, we'll give it another full charge and try it out on its lowest setting to see if we can get close to that eight hours. But first, let's get back to the test. 
three hours go by and the other three are still going strong. So everything except the twist you go gets Rishi Sunak's mandatory winter blackout seal of approval. The second one to bite the dust was the deep light, which dimmed quite a lot in the last hour before it finally gave out. It lasted almost five hours though, which is a pretty decent run. At pretty much the same time, the hapfish fizzled out too, lasting just over five hours on its top brightness. Which means that the last one standing is the little foldy thing. You know what they say, the star that shines dimmest lasts the longest? Something like that. It actually lasted more than a full day, 25 or 26 hours at least. Pretty impressive. Now this might all seem a bit stupid though. You've got a phone with the torch already, right? That'll do in a pinch, surely. It all depends on the phone, really. You can flip your phone around on a stand or balance it on something to light up your space, but it's going to put a big strain on your battery, probably draining it in about an hour on max brightness. You'd also probably want to put a piece of paper in front of it to diffuse the light and make it easier on the eyes and cast fewer shadows. All in all, a bit of an awkward option. In terms of features and value for money, the simplest is Lord Voldemort. Basically just unfold and turn on. That's it. Next up, the deep light, which as I said has colour modes and a bit of versatility with the gooseneck and clamp, and at the same price as the really simple folding lamp is way more worth it at the low end of the budget. Surprisingly, the twist to go, the most expensive model on the list, isn't the most full featured. At £80, while the battery life might be questionable, it offers three brightness settings, manoeuvrability and a robust design, but the versatility prize has to go to the Hatfish. A magnetic clip, cool form factor, widespread, long battery life, multiple light modes and a remote control that gives you access to brightness levels, colour and a timer function really is the icing on the cake of a pretty decent light indeed. Plus it's three times cheaper than the twist to go Also, instead of instantly switching modes like the others, it really smoothly fades, which I know might sound a bit pointless, but it adds to the fanciness and makes it seem more luxurious than the price would suggest. So by now you'll probably have an idea of which lamp would suit you, your budget and your hobby space best, but which would I use in the studio if I was filming in a power cut, which I might have to. Well, despite using the Daylight Company task lamp as my main painting and filming light at my desk, there's no chance I would use the Daylight Company Twist 2 Go. It just doesn't last long enough. Lord Voldemort and the Deep Light just don't really put out enough light for me to film with, although if I was just hobbying and not filming, the Deep Light would be absolutely fine. The clear winner for me here is the Hatfish Magnetic Lamp, and at this price I'd be tempted to buy two to give my desk full illumination. It would still be cheaper than the Twister Go and miles, miles more versatile, and well, just better. The only caveat is that you kind of need an overhanging thing like a shelf to stick it to, or something metal nearby to magnetically lock it to. If you think you might find one of these useful, either for yourself or as a gift to the special hobbyist in your life, you can find links to all of them in the video description and pinned in the comments. These are affiliate links which don't add anything to the price you pay, but Midwinter Minis will get a few pennies as a kickback if you buy it from our link. A nice way to support the channel without any additional cost to you and while getting something useful at the same time. Now speaking of supporting the channel, smooth transition there huh? If you want to actively support the channel, you can join us on Patreon and get access to our Discord server where you can chat with like-minded hobbyists and take part in our monthly Painty Points Challenge. And that's it for me. Thanks for hanging out on this dark, cold, wintry night. And don't forget to check in on your neighbours now and again, especially as it gets colder and especially if they are elderly or vulnerable. And I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.